بوم کرد و کاری دیگر وار ریکورد یا کمیتر با تلفن کنی نیل بیا و چک زود چک دست خوش بیت زود باش بس باشتر بولیه رو بین بو تیپ چیز باید باشه Today I'm, I'm trying to just deliver an online, um, not in phase, practical procedures, a lecture on the practical procedures in pediatrics. Uh, and uh, I'd like uh, to start with the, let's, uh, let's one, uh, we start with the simplest one, which is nasogastric tube insertion. Um, as all of you knows that uh, this is a, a just my cursor is appearing um, is it is it clear or yeah yes doctor it's okay. clear we okay. can see it okay. Bale, bale, doctor. Um, so this is a nasogastric tube um, with a plunger and the non traumatic end uh, so uh, the indication of using nasogastric tube is either for PD or drug administration and second for gastric decompression and the third one for lavage. Uh, lavage means you may use it for diagnostic one, uh, for example, in the case of poisoning. So the, how, how you perform it? Uh, you put the patient, usually is a semi-fowler position, sitting or straight, upright, and the knee bent. But uh, in a small uh, babies, uh, you should do otherwise the uh, in supine position. And uh, you should wash your hands, you prepare all the materials for, and then bring in the mesogastric tube and how to uh, measure it, you start, you put a tip from the nose down to the airlobe, then uh, um, to the zifi, zifi sterne, uh, uh process. So that's the length um, you, uh, that's the length uh, uh, it's supposed to go inside the uh, stomach. So after measuring, you introduce it inside uh, from the nose down to the um, stomach. Uh, so, sorry, okay. And then uh, you put a gel over it and then you push it slowly and directly to the nostril, one of the nostrils down to the posterior oropharynx and down to the um, stomach. How you know, is it inside? Uh, it's it's simply by aspirating first. You you got stomach aspiration or content. Then if not, you inject uh, little air and you listen over the abdomen by stethoscope to uh, to make sure that's in. And what complications you are expected to, to have it either nose bleeding or tube may go to the lungs, by that you have aspiration, uh, or you may have aspiration after feeding of the uh, um, baby with nasogastric tube, or you may damage the, the um, epithelium and causing infection for the baby, or rarely it's causing perforation and nasal cartridge erosion especially when you have, uh, when you use it for a chronic uh, uh, use, like for example, if you want to uh, deliver cer certain amount of the feeding over a period of time, which is long, more than weeks. Uh, so in that case, you should change regularly over five days. Every five days you change it and you put it in one of the nostrils. So you are exchanging between nostrils to not make it uh, complicated uh, on long-term uh, placement. Um, yes, any any questions till now? I don't know.
Mm, I cannot get it. <laughs> How to... Maybe somebody like a dear near. I think a Tazakilia would cut to it. I guess uh, there are contraindications for uh, for for putting a tube. Either the, there is absolute contraindication in which, when there is a severe mid face mid face trauma, or uh, f uh, following nasal surgery. In that case, you are not putting nasogastric tube. There are some relative contraindications, like in case of coagulation abnormality esophageal varices and strictures, and recent banding of four varices again. So in that case, this is relatively contraindicated. You should take care of those patients. Um, another topic, another uh, important topic, important procedure is nebulization. Uh, nebulization, why you are nebulizing your patient? Uh, either to administer drugs like bronchodilators, for example, pinchoin, albuterol, or steroids, uh, the local steroids, I mean, which you use it in this way to decrease its side effects. Or you, uh, to hydrate thick sputum and prevent mucus plugging. That's very important to make them expectorate it, uh, the, the chest content to prevent more infection. And uh, of course, you should do physiotherapy of the chest. Um, uh, either you want to add moisture to oxygen delivery system. So in that case, also you need to uh, nebulize your patient just by uh, normal saline. So in some cases, you just need normal saline nebulization without drug so in that case you just you want to moisture or hydrate the respiratory system if you look here it it's how the nebulizer pieces and machines appearing this is the machine by itself uh, and there are power it's, it should be connected to the power and there is a uh, an opening of the air Fan, the fan, the fan uh, opening of the air. And then we have connector. The connectors, one to the tube, which is to the tube here. And then the tube is connected to the cup. That cup uh, is uh, contained, uh, like it, it's a container. You should put the drug or the fluid inside. And then you, the, the, the cup is sealed. Uh, that cup sealed over it, then you connect by mouthpiece or a face mask in, in either ways. I mean, it's an hold or hold one. Uh, so there is a hole inside which, which uh, in that case, you doesn't need to rebreathe the other. So that's the parts of the uh, nebulizer. Then how to do it? how to perform it. You see how the child is sitting position and the face mask is fit there and the, that's the uh, uh, um, nebulizing tube. Then that's the tube connected to the machine. The machine just delivers high pressure flow air. Then the air will make the substance become vaporized and uh, hold the air, I mean the uh, ordinary air, which non-medical air, going inside with the medication, with each respiration. So that's the way you should do it. Then um, 
uh, you put the patient in the comfortable position, you put a mask and you open. So, so many companies made it in different ways to make kids not scared of. And you see, this is a nice uh, uh, car, which is already, it's already a, a machine, which is a nebulizing machine that make the child happy when uh, you deliver the uh, material or the even, even sodium chloride uh, containing fluid to inside it. And maybe so many of you asking about why you are using uh, sodium chloride containing fluid, which is normal saline, instead of distilled water. Uh, as you know, when we, you uh, give uh, normal saline in the nebulization, so the normal saline containing fluid goes inside the sputum, and the sputum will take more blood, and it becomes more vicious and can be expectorated well. But if you are giving just distilled water, it will not do the same work what you need for that. There is another um, procedure it's, you should be very familiar with, and on a daily basis we are using it, which is pulse oximeter. Um, you know, the pulse oximeter is a small machine. Either it's a portable one, like this one, or it, uh, it's a fixed one, like with a desk desktop, or we may have a big one, uh, you saw in our hospitals and it has a connector connecting to fingers or toes as you wish then um, it will measure the oxygen saturation by uh, by the mechanism of the measuring that blood uh, where the blood is going through the finger tips and also it will give you also the heart rate of your patient so it will be a very good indicator for your state of your patient. And how it works? It works in such a way that there is a light emitting diode and there is a receiver at the, tip, uh, at the tip of the machine. And it has two waves. One is a red wave and another wave is infrared wave, which is not seen. The red wave is seen. So in that case, uh, the... Uh, the blood, which is containing hemoglobin, that absorbing the light, and accordingly, uh, the machine calculate the percentage of the ox uh, the light absorbed, and it will convert to the uh, saturation by digital one. But there are so many difficulties with it. For example, uh, if you have a low oxygen sat in your pulse oximeter. You may have hypoxia, yes, but you may have also abnormal hemoglobin, like methemoglobin, self-hemoglobin, or they may give a uh, methylene blue that causing uh, um, uh, blue discoloration without uh, a possible abnormal saturation. And maybe the child polishing the nail, especially with the blue one, so you should take it off, uh, and there may be, uh, there is a prominent venous pulsation that misinterprets by the pulse oximeter that it's an artery, or there may be a contamination by the ambient light. For example, if you have a very strong light over it, like a, 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 a usual light we have now with the uh, 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 high quality, uh, 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 lighters, so in, in that way, you may have a wrong uh, reading. Um, the problem with pulse, uh, pulse oximetry is usually with methemoglobin. So in case of methemoglobin, there will be abnormal reading. There will be cyanosis, but the machine will read it as a normal sign. So in that case, uh, there is a new machine called CO. Uh, oximetry, uh, which give you the percentage of oxygen, uh, oxygen saturated hemoglobin, and the uh, uh, CO two even. So there are there are a new there there are there is a new machine which always giving you the percentage of methemoglobin 
uh, oxymicohemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin and also uh, a, a carboxyhemoglobin. So the two of, uh, content of the uh, uh, blood. That's a new machine. It's not available here. Um, another important uh, subject um, or uh, procedure done in pediatric is uh, is by AmboBac uh, ventilation. So AmboBac is the uh, I'm showing you here. Oops, back again. So the AmboBac is the um, a, a, it's, it's a very important part of the ICU managing uh, um, materials and it has the following con parts. One is the face mask with the uh, cushion part which not hurt the face and also it fit the face well. Then that part should be the size of your patient's face. So it's always changed from new, I mean, the size will be different. Here, that's the contact contain, uh, connector. Then in that connecting part, there's a pressure limiting valve in which when you are delivering the uh, a certain amount of the uh, pressure, if it's more than 40 uh, millimeter Hg, uh, so it will just puff off. So in, in, in pop off when it pop off when the uh, pressure is over 40. Uh, and that's th that bag here is the ventilation bag, which is a rubber bag. Uh, so it has it has three sizes. We have 250 mil size and we have 500 cc and we have one liter. One liter for adolescent and adult. Uh, 500 for the childhood and 250 for the neonate. And uh, uh, there is another part here, which is a reservoir bag. This, this reservoir bag for the oxygen. So when you oxygen uh, uh, deliver oxygen through the tube here, then it will fill up the bulb and also the reservoir bag. So when you push blood, uh, push uh, air through the bag down to the uh, patient, then the reservoir will give or feed the bulb with fully oxygenated air. So that's the way it works. Um, um, then why you are using this? In neonate, you need it for resuscitation when you have a perinatal asphyxia, when the patient delivered and then sometimes in the neonatal unit, your, your patient uh, um, resuscitated when they got RDA. Um, sometimes in case when you have a respiratory failure due to pneumonia or asthma, poisoning or infections. Uh, there are certain contraindications of it. Is it diaphragmatic hernia or tracheoesophageal fistula cases? So uh, the very important point here, why you are using AmboBag, if you look, when we give oxygen or air by mouth-to-mouth -mouth technique, we are giving 16% 16, 16 of oxygen to the patient, which is very little. And when you are giving by AmboBag, uh, AmboBag, which is on room air without the reserve and oxygen tubing, so we are giving 21%, which is the uh, room oxygen saturation. But when we are using AmboBac with oxygen, with the reservoir, and uh, without reservoir, but with oxygen, so in that case, we are giving 45%. But when we have a reservoir there with a tubing system, all sealed, Till the mouth of the patient. So in that case, we are delivering nearly 85% of oxygen, which is very good uh, uh, um, percent of oxygen to be delivered to the patient. 
how to how to fix it if you look here you put the the, the face mask over shin to over the nose then in that that part should be fit well then how to hold it uh, it should be in sniffing position and the thumb and index finger to be maintained on the face seal um, and then the middle finger under the mandibular symphysis you see and then the ring and little finger under the angle of the mouth by this you hold all the system over the face and you hold all the shin uh, uh, to be maintained in that position to make uh, breathing easier so this is slightly extended in adult patient or adolescent even childhood but in neonate take care of that don't do extension so put the patient in neutral position not slightly a, a, a extended position so in neonate should be in neutral position um, another important uh, um, uh, way to deliver oxygen is endotracheal intubation so why you are putting the tube in the trachea to provide mechanical respiratory support and also obtain aspirate from culture or assist in bronchopulmonary hygiene, lytology, or alleviate subglottic stenosis. Sometimes you have stenosis, you, you, you try to bypass it, or uh, uh, you need to give medication like uh, epinephrine, lig lidocaine, atropine, or sometimes in neonate we are giving uh, um, surfactants, as you know, in those with respiratory distress syndrome you are using this so how to uh, uh, how to prepare for that you should have a et tube with and with uh, without cup and you should have laryngoscope with blades with different size of blades and you should have a suction uh, uh, apparatus maybe you need to clear up the way down and then you should have a back end mask with adjustable oxygen source to maintain oxygenation and then you should monitor your patient on respiratory and cardiac base i mean ecg and pulse oximetry and in saturation i mean saturation and pulse um, so the et tube either is a cuff or non-cuffed one and uh, usually the non-cuffed one uh, should be used less than eight year of age because you know we have a narrow subglottic area and you may injure them and end up with problems in the and if you look to the picture here you see that's the standard et tube uh, there is a uh, at the end there is a hole and the eyes which is murphy eyes and there is a cuff behind it then you have a tube itself and it's graded by numbers and at the end uh, you put the connector but the style, the stylet uh, used for fixing it all the way down. And you have the inflator uh, through here to inflate the bulb or the cuff in the cuffed one. And in non-cuffed one, we have in that part, uh, like this one. It's a non-cuffed one, uh, only the tube. Uh, and you see here, all it's written, what you need. So for example, it's a two, two uh, and the length of it, here, um, I don't know, it's, uh, uh, it's in centimeter, it's 10 centimeter here. So I will give you the length and also the French, French size. So here um, we have, a, um, for example, in neonate, we are using, a, it depends on which gestation and which way, a weight we are dealing with. And accordingly, we are uh, uh, putting the size accordingly uh, 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 according to the patient's age gestational age and the weight but more than one year we are just for example we are putting the uh, number of years uh, accordingly we will do uh, arrangement for that so for example four years it's one plus four is five so that's the way we are dealing with and 
the laryngoscope uh, always take uh, take care that you should always make sure you have good batteries it's working the uh, uh, the bulb uh, is it working so you should make sure that everything is okay before entering then we have two kinds of the blade we have the curved one which is my Macintosh or we have a Miller Miller which is the straight one usually in pediatrics we are using the Miller with different sizes according to the age and also you should take care of that that's very important before starting procedure make sure that it works the light is working and the battery is in and when you start the procedure you, you prepare all the materials for that then you uh, put the uh, 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 put the patient in the, uh, um, the position that according to the age as I told you then uh, you insert uh, the blade at first then uh, on the direct view you go in uh, and put in the ambo back over it or you may connect to the ventilator complications tracheal perforation esophageal perforation laryngeal edema may be improperly used tube obstruction kinking subglottic stenosis all these are complications related there is an important subject which is intravenous cannulation by cannula which is simple but very important we have a catheter we have a needle in we have a plunger here and uh, also we have a locker with the plunger inside so uh, with a stylus uh, uh, needle so uh, we have different kinds of uh, or different sizes and colors accordingly for example for neonate we are using this one and for adults we are it, it depends on how much the diameter of your patient and how much the length of uh, uh, cannula you need for that so accordingly you are uh, 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 putting the size you want um, you need it for blood sampling or administration of medication fluid and parenteral nutrition and also blood uh, there are certain sides of it either in the hand or the feet uh, above the ankle and here between four four and fifth digit uh, you put it uh, but in uh, small creatures like neonates and kids we are preferring scalp uh, uh, in neonate but anchic pubital it's because they are using it a lot as you know pediatrics they are more uh, 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 moving so it's better not to put in anchic vital uh, how to how to do it you wash your hand you uh, just obstruct the venous return you allocate it then you make sure that everything uh, in place and you uh, remove the cover then you find it go in take some stylus back see how how is the blood coming in so it's you are in then you hold it and you make sure to seal it well in urinate is somewhat different you know we are sometimes we need blood to sample it so sampling is very important you see how to do it in hand we are making sure to fix it uh, this is very nice one to sampling so it will not bleed so we when you take it inside the tube it will bleed then it will seal up then this is the uh, low pressure tube it will take suck out the blood these are all the way to do it um in lock there are complications related which local complications like infiltration extravasation thrombosis and etc there's systemic complications, which is very rare. Doctor, again, I have to guess. Yes. 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 So we will we will wait. Uh, it's uh, just twenty seconds left. So we will make it uh, happening again in next few minutes. Okay.
اوكي دكتور ري ادميت افتر وذ ذا سيم لينك وذ ذا سيم لينك اوكي اي ثينك ات جوز اتس 40 مينتس اوكي ام اوكسجين ثيرابي اكوردنج تو ذا دبليو اتش او جايد لاين سو وين يو شود جيف تو ذا سنترال 